Hey guys, this is Alan with Bothell STEM Coach, and today we are doing another AP Physics 1 free response question. Um, this one is energy focused. Um, it won't only be energy. Typically, the free response questions pull in uh, different areas of uh, topics, but this one is uh, predominantly energy, hopefully. Um, so let's take a look. Um, I encourage you to pause the video, try to do the problem on your own, struggle with it, think about it, see what equations you come up with, and then continue watching to um, see how it compares to what you are doing. Okay, so roller coaster track in an amusement park. Um, sorry, let me clear that out. A roller coaster ride in an amusement park lifts a car of mass 700 kilograms to a point A at a height 90 meters above the lowest point. The car starts from rest at point A, rolls with negligible friction down the incline, and follows the track in a loop of radius at 20 meters at point B. The highest point in the loop is at a height of 50 meters, okay, above the lowest point on the track. Indicating the figure of the point of P, which the maximum uh, speed of the car is attained. So the maximum is actually the lowest point because it's all of the potential energy. This is energy conservation. All of the potential energy is converted into purely uh, kinetic energy at this point. See, in any other point that's higher, it has some potential energy, which means it has to have less kinetic energy. In principle, in these, like the potential energy plus the kinetic energy has to stay constant the entire time. So when is the kinetic energy the maximum? It's when the potential energy is the smallest. And why do I, you know, this is about maximum speed. Maximum speed is when I have the maximum kinetic energy, right? Because kinetic energy is 1 half mv squared. Okay, calculate the Vmax of this maximum speed. Well, up here, um, it starts from rest at point A. So at point A, it has only purely potential energy. So at point A, it has only potential energy, which is equal to mgh, which is equal to uh, 700 kilograms times 9.8 times 90 meters. This is meters per second squared, but yeah, whatever. And that would be Uh, 617400 joules. Okay, so now at point P, um, it only has kinetic energy. It has no potential energy because its height above this point is zero. So that's equal to one half mv squared. But all it must have come from all this potential energy by conservation of mechanical energy, right? All this energy must have been conserved. So I multiply by 2, divide by mass, so V squared equals um, this energy times 2, 2 times 617400 divided by uh, M, which is 700 kilograms, and then square root. Oh, that's V squared, so then V is square root of that. So I got this is 42 meters per second. So this is the fastest the roller coaster gets to it, right at the bottom here. At point B, calculate its speed. Well, at point B, what's happening is it still has the same amount of energy, but now it's split between some potential energy and some kinetic energy. Its potential energy is mgh, and its kinetic energy is 1 half mv squared. Now, its mgh at this point is 700 kilograms times 9.8 meters per second squared. Time, its height, you see it's at 50 meters, plus 1 half mv squared will equal the same 617400. So I can compute this, subtract that, and then solve for v, right? If I, so 1 half mv squared would have to equal 617400 minus 700 kilograms times 9.8 meters per second squared times 50 meters. So I do that. I get 274400. Then I'm going to multiply. So then my V again is the square root. I'm going to multiply by 2. And then divide by M. Twenty-eight 
28 meters per second. Okay, so that was part B there. On the figure below, draw and label vectors to represent forces acting on the car when it is upside down at point B. We'll have gravity acting on it. And the track is technically maybe pushing against me with a normal force. See, the track can only push against me. It can't pull me up. Nothing's pulling me up, actually. That's actually important to note. The only forces I have are pulling me down. Gravity's pulling me down. And from this part of the track, it's, pulling, it's pushing me upward, pushing me down also. Now let's calculate the forces I identified in C. Well, the net force on this, I'll kind of do it like over here. What's the net force is mg plus the normal force. The net for so this is subject to acceleration. What kind of acceleration is it feeling? It's feeling centripetal acceleration, right? Because it's going in a circular, a circular path. M times A, but the A is centripetal acceleration, so it's V squared over R. Okay. So I can calculate the force. I can calculate this force, one of these forces, the force of gravity. Actually, instead of FG, I'm going to write as F. Mg and rise Fg. So Fg is pretty easy to calculate. It's m times g, which is 700 kilograms times 9.8 meters per second squared. That's equal to 6860 newtons. Okay, so that's one force that I have. The other is the normal force, and I can use this equation to calculate the normal force. It's equal to m v squared over r minus mg. So M is 700 kilograms. V squared is, see, we say we calculated the velocity was at 28. So it's 28 meters per second squared. R is the radius of the circular path. That's 20 meters minus Mg, which we found was 6860. Okay. I get 20,580 newtons. Okay, that's C part two. Now suppose that friction is not negligible. How could the loop be modified to maintain the same speed at the top of the loop as found in part B? Okay, so friction means I'm gonna lose some energy here, right? So that means my total energy here, um, is going to be less because this whole time I'm going to be losing energy due to friction. Okay. So I'm going to have less, so I'm going to be going slower than I calculated in part, um, part B. But if I wanted to maintain that, I could lower the loop. I could lower the loop to in, to say like, well, then maybe we don't need to make it go as high. So we would transfer some of this potential energy and kinetic energy by lowering the loop. So we could lower the loop. Um, so yeah, lower the loop. That's one thing you could do. Um, that's probably, it's all an energy thing. So that's, that's pretty much what you can do. The only thing you really can do is because energy is lost in order to give that energy back to kinetic energy, I got to lower this point B somehow. So lowering the loop, that's pretty much the only thing you can do. I mean, you can shrink the radius too to lower the loop. You know, like you just need to lower the physical point B down, and that could be like reducing the radius or like reducing this incline, or you know, um, just basically reducing this 50 meter point by some amount. Okay, hope you guys found that helpful. I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching the video, guys. Please leave a comment, like, or subscribe below to catch up more of the content. And see any links below. I offer free homework help on uh, Twitch and Discord. See you guys in the next video.